when you're working, it's very important to stay fully caffeinated. You didn't give me any. You're a child. You can't see uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, so I wanted to let you guys know what's been going on in our raised bed garden area. Um, and so two weeks ago, uh, on September 15th, I thought I was getting a head start on our fall seeds, seed plantings, and um, did the work. It was hot as hot can be out here in Arizona. So it was probably 115 that day and I spent the entire day prepping what I thought would, uh, you know, getting the soil ready, new, new fertilizer, compost, everything. And uh, then now two weeks later, it is September 30th, expecting to see lots of seeds sprouting up and everything starting to really germinate. And I come out and there's only maybe, I don't know, three or four things, uh, seedlings that have started to sprout. And I'm like, what the heck? And it has been unusually hot this season um, for us uh, in Arizona. And usually we get a monsoon season. Well, I shouldn't say usually, but when we're lucky, we get a monsoon season. And after doing some research and figuring out what the problem was, I thought I'd better grab my pH meter. So I have a Hydrofarm three-way meter, and this has actually been really helpful for me um, whenever I need to kind of see what's going on. Now, I'm not saying this replaces a soil test or anything like that, but it definitely works really well if you need to kind of get an idea of maybe what, if any problem you may have with your soil. So, so I slide the little lever over to the pH and then when I insert it into my soil, you can now see that our pH level is very far alkaline. Unfortunately for everything that I have planted, we need to be more around 6, 6.5-ish. We should be over on this this end of the spectrum. So what we're gonna be doing is getting a bunch of peat moss and we we're gonna basically layer about one to three inches over the topsoil and working that in. And then we're probably gonna to have to reseed again. And now we're in my books, I'm like, oh, we're two weeks behind, but hey, sometimes these things happen. It's better to identify it early on and then try to kind of pick up um, where you left off. So my hope is that we're able to adjust our soil, get it back to a more acidic level where we need to be. And then hopefully in the next few weeks after we plant our new seeds, we'll start to actually see some germ, some of those seeds germinating. So uh, here we go. applied a very thick layer of peat moss here to this bed and we are going to be working this in to the soil to hopefully help with our pH problem. All right so we are on day two of our fall plantings and we decided to do in our front porch area um, some nice pots uh, of plantings but I made the mistake of buying some coleus plants that I don't have pots for. And so we went back, we got our materials, and now we are going to be lining the pots for our coleus plants to set in and then um, adding those in to our display. So if you want to follow me, I'll kind of show you what we do to prepare our terracotta plant uh, pots for planting. This is called Water Shield. It's a roof and foundation coating. Um, you just basically get a really cheap brush. You're going to take this and smear it around on the inside. It's pretty thick and this helps to waterproof it so that way you don't risk your, your pot cracking. Yeah, you don't want your pot to crack. That would not be fun.
everyone so we are back in the garden today and we are going to take a look at our raised garden beds to see how our seeds are coming along if we're starting to get some germination um, and how that is going and then I'll give you a quick tour on how things are looking as of today and so today it is October 23rd and so we'll just take a look and kind of see how we're doing all right so let's go as you can see I think our tomato tree really liked that acidity from the peat moss because it ex exploded. It has totally exploded since the last time I was out here. So but let's come back over here. We have some sugar snap peas starting back in here and a little lettuce way over here, which is pretty cool. It's doing quite well. I don't know if you remember from before, but we did have just a slight growth on that. Over here we've got some garlic. This year I decided to grow two different varieties of garlic. One is a Mexican garlic and the other one is from California, just a California variety. Um, we've got some radishes. And what do we have here? All right. So we planted ourselves some broccoli, some lettuce, and some chives. It looks like we do got some stuff going on here. I have to admit this bed just keeps getting taken over by grass. And again, if you have any suggestions on how to keep grass from growing up into your garden beds, please put them in the comments below. I would be so very grateful. That is something else that we've been battling in this particular garden bed. None of the other garden beds seem to have an issue, but this one in particular is definitely a struggle. So, but uh, we've got some carrots, tons of carrots. Some of these are rainbow carrots, the other variety is just regular. And then we've got broccoli. This broccoli really took off here on this one. And then we've got some lettuce, butter, butter crunch lettuces, and then um, some chives as well. And then it looks like we're starting to see some of our broccoli starting to sprout here, and then more carrots. So, carrots here, very cool. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. That concludes our garden tour today, and I hope you will check back soon for more updates. We'll keep you posted on what is happening next in our garden, in our yard. Um, but yeah, we just wanna say thank you so much for watching, and we hope you have a great day. Bye.